Hello dear viewers, welcome back to this channel. I am your guide Microbot. Today's video is a comprehensive compilation of vaccines against viral diseases. So let's get started. Friends, the essence of today's video lies in this single slide. If you can remember this slide, you will be a master of viral vaccines. I am not just joking, but wait a second, I think your reaction is something like this, isn't it? Because nothing is properly visible on this slide. But don't worry friends, we will zoom right in and check out the individual viral vaccines. Vaccines in general are available as live vaccines, killed vaccines, toxoids or conjugates. And more recently we have subunit vaccines, DNA and mRNA vaccines. But for viral infections, if we can remember four different groups, that's more than enough. Friends, we'll first discuss three groups and talk about the fourth group later. So what's the first group? It is called as inactivated vaccines. These vaccines are also called as killed vaccines. The second group is called as live attenuated vaccines. For some viral diseases, we have both inactivated or killed vaccines plus live attenuated vaccines also. Start with inactivated vaccines. The first disease against which inactivated vaccines are given is rabies. Here we have two categories. Number one, neural vaccines. These neural vaccines are derived from nervous tissue of animals infected with fixed rabies virus. And the second category is non-neural vaccines. Of course, against Kaysenur forest disease also, we have an inactivated vaccine, which is called as killed Kaysenur forest disease vaccine. This is actually a formally inactivated chick embryo vaccine. In India, it is developed in Hafkins Institute, Mumbai, and it is recommended in endemic areas only. Friends, we will now go one step further and talk about the different examples under neural vaccines and non-neural vaccines against rabies. We will start with the first one which is called as the Sempel vaccine. Sempel vaccine is derived from infected sheep brain and it is inactivated with phenol. The second neural vaccine is called as BPL vaccine. BPL stands for beta propiolactone. It is a modified version of the Sempel vaccine and it is inactivated with beta propiolactone instead of phenol. The third neural vaccine is called as infant mouse brain vaccine which is derived from infected neural tissues of newborn mice. Friends, I want you to note here that since neural vaccines are encephalogenic and poorly immunogenic and they are associated with neurological complications, they are no longer in use since the year 2004 and they have been replaced completely with non-neural vaccines. As I told you, the non-neural vaccines which are cell cultured are the most recommended vaccines for the prevention of rabies nowadays. They are highly immunogenic and are devoid of the neurological complications. The first example under non-neural vaccines is PCEC vaccine. PCEC stands for purified chick embryo cell vaccine. It is developed from chick fibroblast cell lines. The second non-neural vaccine is HDC vaccine. HDC stands for human diploid cell vaccine and it is derived from human embryonic lung fibroblast cell lines. The third non-neural vaccine is PVC vaccine. PVC stands for purified vero cell vaccine and it is developed from vero cell lines. Friends, we are done with the inactivated viral vaccines. Please have a final look at this group so that we can proceed forward. We will now discuss the intermediate group where we have both inactivated and live attenuated vaccines against a single viral disease, starting with polio. As we know, against polio, we have two vaccines, namely the IPV which is injectable polio vaccine and OPV which is oral polio vaccine. IPV was first discovered by Jonas Salk in the year 1952. For its preparation what do we do? We take the polio virus and grow it in monkey kidney cell lines and inactivate it with formalin. The OPV vaccine was first developed by Albert Sabin, Koprovsky and Cox in the year 1955 and it is available in trivalent, bivalent and monovalent forms. The next disease is influenza. Against influenza also, we have killed vaccine and a live attenuated vaccine. But actually, to prepare the influenza vaccine, 
strains to be included in the vaccine depend upon the strains isolated in the previous influenza season and the strains that are anticipated to circulate in the upcoming season. So as I told you, we have a killed vaccine and a live attenuated vaccine which is trivalent and it is given intranasally. For yellow fever also, we have a killed vaccine called the Dakar vaccine. This vaccine is mouse brain derived and it is found to be encephalogenic. Hence, it is no longer in use. We also have a live attenuated vaccine called the 17D vaccine. It is prepared from the allantoic cavity of chick embryos. Hence, it is contraindicated in people having egg allergy. In India, yellow fever vaccine is prepared in Central Research Institute, Kasauli. The next disease is hepatitis A. Here also, we have an inactivated vaccine and a live attenuated vaccine. The inactivated vaccine is prepared from human fetal lung fibroblast cell lines and the live attenuated vaccine is prepared from the human diploid cell lines. Finally, against Japanese B encephalitis, we have two killed vaccines. The first one is developed from Nakayama strain and the second one is developed from Beijing strain. Both of them are mouse brain derived and are formally inactivated. They are prepared in Central Research Institute, Kasauli in India. The live attenuated vaccine is developed from SA1442 strain and it is prepared from primary hamster kidney cell lines and it is given to children in the ages 1 to 15. It targets population in four states in India belonging to Uttar Pradesh, Karnataka, West Bengal and Assam. Next group is live attenuated vaccines. We'll start with measles. For measles, the strain used is Edmundston Zagreb strain. This vaccine is prepared from chick embryo cell lines. It is available as a lyophilized form and we need to reconstitute it with distilled water and use within four hours of reconstitution. One more important point pertaining to measles is that the vaccine and the immunoglobulin should never be given together. At least a gap of 8 to 12 weeks should be maintained between the two. For mums, the strain that is used is Gerilin strain. This is also a live attenuated vaccine and it is prepared from chick embryo cell lines. It is available in trivalent, quadrivalent and monovalent forms. For rubella, the strain used is RA273. It is prepared from human diploid fibroblast cell lines. This vaccine is contraindicated in pregnancy because it is teratogenic. And any woman should avoid pregnancy for at least four weeks following vaccination. For smallpox, an unattenuated live vaccinia virus is used for vaccination. It is highly effective. It is given as a single dose between the years one to two years. For chickenpox, also we have a live attenuated vaccine which is derived from Oka strain. It is given to children after one year of age in two doses. The first dose is given between 12 to 15 months and the second dose is given between 4 to 6 years. In adults, if they are zero negative, two doses are given one month apart. For rotavirus also, we have live attenuated vaccines. Two brands are available, Rotovac and Rotarix. Rotovac is manufactured by Bharat Biotech in India and it is given in three doses. Rotorix is given in two doses. We have successfully finished the first three groups that is inactivated vaccines, live attenuated vaccines and both inactivated plus live attenuated vaccines against viral infections. As I told you earlier, there is also a fourth group that we need to learn that is subunit vaccines. Actually, for certain viruses, only a particular subunit of the virus is necessary to initiate the immunity. Hence, this viral component alone can be used as a vaccine rather than the whole virus. Such vaccines that are derived are called as subunit vaccines. The most commonly encountered subunit vaccines are given for hepatitis B and papillomas. The hepatitis B vaccine is prepared from Baker's yeast by recombinant DNA technology where we clone the S gene 
of hepatitis b virus into the east chromosome in case of papillomas the vaccines are recently developed and have shown a dramatic reduction in the rates of human papilloma virus infections including cervical cancers these subunit vaccines consist of virus like particles composed of the human papilloma virus l1 protein that are produced in yeast by recombinant dna technology nine valent gardasil vaccine and bivalent cervarix vaccine are commercially available now friends we are done now i told you earlier that the essence of today's video lies in this single slide i think there is no doubt about it now i have not covered covid vaccines in this video because it is worth discussing covid vaccine separately i have covered the most common viral vaccines here i hope i made it exciting and interesting for you in case you like the content of the video please consider subscribing and share it with your friends and family members i hope to see you in the next video until next time thank you and goodbye